Good morning. Welcome to Sun Up. I'm Austin Moore. As summer draws to a close, it's time for wheat producers to make decisions about what variety to put in the ground. But as producers weigh their options, there are some laws to consider. For more, here's Sun Up's Lindell Stout. As we wind down August, Oklahoma producers are starting to think about getting their wheat planted. Joining us now is Jeff Edwards, our small grains extension specialist. And Jeff, let's start out with what you're hearing from, from producers. Well, producers are making decisions right now about what wheat varieties they're going to plant, hearing a lot of good things about them incorporating some new varieties into their programs, which is great news. And they're trying to secure their seed uh, and making sure that they have adequate seed to plant this fall. And when it comes to selecting the seed, there are some guidelines and some laws that you get questions about. You get a lot of questions this time of year about the Plant Variety Protection Act, which is typically just called the PVP Act. Most of our wheat varieties that we grow now are PVP protected. Even as far back as Jagger, the varieties are PVP protected. And that means they can only be sold as a certified class of seed. So they can't really be transferred from farmer to farmer or, or planted as bin run seed. They can only be sold as certified seed. And there are penalties for violation of the law. The, whoever has the licensing agreement on those varieties can pursue legal action against people selling those varieties, not as a certified class. There have been settlements anywhere from 20 to over $100,000. Uh, so it's, it's a real serious issue. It sounds like it, and then there are other people who may be potentially involved in that workflow who could be liable? Absolutely. Uh, typically when I talk with producers, they, and then thinking about the law, they typically focus on the person who is selling the seed. But as the law is written, the person selling the seed and the person purchasing the seed, if they're in violation, could be involved in the lawsuit. And if you really wanted to get technical, anyone else who got involved in that transaction, maybe someone cleaning the seed, weighing the trucks, if they knew what was going on, they could be put in the lawsuit as well. So it is a really serious issue. And just because you're the purchaser doesn't mean that you're exempt from the law. And what are the exceptions? If you're using your own seed, there are some, some areas there. Right, that, that is one common misconception. A PVP protected variety, you can save that seed to plant on your own farm and your own operation indefinitely. Uh, there's no issue there. You just can't sell it to anyone. You can't trade it to anyone. You can't uh, sell it standing in the field. I get all kinds of questions about ways around the law, and there really is no way around the law. Even if you're saving your own seed, I would recommend that each year you plant a certain amount of certified seed to save for the following year so that your seed that you're planting is no more than one year away from certification. That's just a good management practice to, in, to incorporate. And then there are some economics to think about in that as well? Well, uh, typically our farmers, or sometimes they think of the farmer saved seed as being low cost. But really, when you put everything into it, uh, it's, it's not free. It has a value. Whatever the market price of wheat is, let's say $8 this past year, you're going to have a good 2 or $3 in cleaning charges and shrinkage, things like that. So you can easily have $10 per bushel in farmer-saved seed. You can typically buy certified seed from anywhere from $12 to $15 per bushel. That's less than one bushel per acre, typically about a half a bushel per acre. On most operations, having certified seed, good quality seed, will make them an extra half to a bushel per acre at least, uh, so it, it pays for itself. Let's talk about seed a little more and get into some of the varieties, and there's a variety in particular that there's some, some questions about regarding this, this rule. Uh, well, the clear field varieties would be one exception to what we just discussed. In the clear field varieties, there's a gene in those that uh, confers resistance to imazomox or imidazolinone herbicides, and there's a utility patent on that gene. And this would be similar, although they're not GMOs, this would be similar to what we would have with Roundup Ready. And with a clear field variety, you have to purchase new seed every year. You cannot save that seed back to plant on your own farm even, so you'd have to purchase new seed every year with a clear field variety. Okay, and then in terms of other varieties that you're, you're talking about and, and looking at in the future? 
Well, speaking of Clearfield, we've got a new Clearfield variety out there released from OSU just this year. Double Stop CL Plus is the name of it. It's a two gene Clearfield wheat, which is going to allow you to add methylated seed oil into the Beyond herbicide. And what that does is gets you much more uh, activity on feral rye. Still not going to be as good as winter canola, but if you're locked into a wheat, continuous wheat system, uh, it's going to allow you to tackle some of those problem weeds and it's going to do a much better job on feral rye and jointed goat grass and some of those problem weeds than you could do with the one gene varieties. We're really excited about it, performed very well in our variety test this year. And it is still kind of in the pipeline though, not wide availability yet? Not wide availability yet. Uh, for the first year of release, there's quite a bit of seed available uh, relative to what we've had with other varieties on their first year of release, uh, but it's going to be pretty tight this year. And then just kind of a final word of advice for producers as they're gearing up for this kind of exciting time for, for the year. A, it's an exciting time. At no time during the year does that seed or that wheat crop have more yield potential than when it's still a seed. You still have all of that genetic yield potential contained in there. So what I like for growers to do right now is be making plans for what they're going to do throughout the year to make sure they capture as much of that genetic yield potential as possible. Our fungicides on the table, uh, that's something you really need to consider right now before you choose a variety. Are you willing to spray a fungicide? Uh, what's your fertility program? Uh, those are things that you really need to be taking in consideration and making those decisions right now. Okay, Jeff Edwards, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot.